Well, good afternoon here from southern Idaho. Alpine guy here. The weather's finally starting to warm up a little bit. We're about 40 degrees today. The 45 plus mile an hour winds we had yesterday has uh, more or less stopped. It's, it's gushing about 15, but uh, the sun's out, so we're going to get out and do a quick couple of quick uh, little brake checks I'd like to show you about. And so a lot of people, they uh, sometimes will make a post and they'll say, well, I don't think all my brakes are working right. Uh, what do I got to do? And, uh, you know, how do I check this and how do I check that? And the, the shorter answer with these tandem axle uh, Alpines is there's really no easy way. I mean, uh, you know, if you really want to uh, do it the, the hard way, and perhaps maybe the best way is if you think you've got a brake that's not working, uh, simply jack one side up at a time on that Alpine, pull the emergency brake uh, uh, pin, and then try to rotate those two tires. If uh, they don't rotate, uh, then those brakes are good. Then go over on the other side, lift it off the ground, and uh, try to rotate those two tires. So if all four tires don't rotate with the emergency brake pin pulled, then uh, it's reasonable to assume that everything is working good. I always like to do a couple of preseason checks uh, on the electrical wiring uh, from the uh, seven-way plug uh, that runs from the pickup truck up uh, to the pin box and of course uh, from the pin box uh, back through the wiring harness uh, uh, all the way back to the brakes. So what I'm done is I'm just using my inexpensive uh, meter today and we'll get we'll get my fingers out of the way and we've got a shadow there so we'll see if we can get that out of the way. And what I'm doing is I've set the, the meter to ohm scale and we're gonna measure the resistance. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring the resistance from pins one and two, which is ground and the trailer brakes. And I wanna measure the resistance of the wiring circuit from these two connections up through that pin box uh, junction, all the way back through all four of those brake magnets. And so a rough wag on the resistance of each one of those brake magnets magnets uh, each one is a coil so it's going to have a resistance the nominal resistance of each coil is anywhere from three to four ohms of resistance and most people would think well all i have to do is just add all four of those uh, uh, brakes together and uh, that's the resistance i should read well no you can't because your brakes are not wired in series so you just can't add the four uh, magnets together and get the resistance. You have to calculate the resistance uh, of a parallel circuit because they're all wired in parallel. So with this uh, inexpensive meter that I'm using, I think it was about 30 bucks. Normally you'd see me using my uh, nice yellow uh, meter out here, the Fluke, but uh, this one will do the job just fine. And right now measuring all four brake magnets uh, through the wiring harness, through the trailer connection plug, we're seeing about 1.1 to 1.0 ohms. So you're going to probably say, well, that's great. What does that tell me? Well, what that tells me is that all the way from this uh, seven-way plug up through that pin box, uh, junction box, and then all through those four wires that run back to each one of those brake magnets, it tells me that the positive side of each one of those brake magnets is good and it also tells me that the ground is good and therefore I'm reading about 1 to 1 1.1 ohms of resistance because it's a parallel circuit, remember. So that tells me that the wiring is good and that tells me that theoretically all four of those brake magnets should be working as Dexter designed them to. So that's a quick easy way to check a wiring problem. If you don't see somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, about 0.8 ohms of res resistance to maybe about 1.2 to 1.3 ohms of resistance, if you see anything out of that range of 0.8 to about 1.2 to maybe 1.5, then that tells you that you've got a problem with one of those brake magnets, you've got a problem with one of the uh, wires leading up to one of the magnets, uh, or you've got to break somewhere else in that wiring circuit. So that's a quick, easy way to test and know for a fact the integrity of your wiring system uh, for your electrical brakes. 
And once again, that uh, resistance measurement that I showed you to measure all four of those uh, magnets. It's just a quick way to test your wiring system if you think you have a problem or if you just want to know if you have a problem. And if you see anything other than what you saw at the beginning of the video uh, out of that range, then you know that you maybe you've got a broken wire, maybe you've got a magnet that uh, the coil on it has, has failed or is failing, or you've got uh, a dirty ground on one of the four brake magnets. It could be any of, the, any of those three things that could be causing an issue. Uh, if your resistance reading uh, is out of the uh, range that I've shown in this video. Okay, so now I've crawled underneath the Alpine and we're at the, at the driver's side front uh, brake assembly at the back of the hub. And we're looking at these two wires right here and they go in through the backing plate and go into the solenoid on the brake magnet. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set this uh, meter to measure DC amps. And as you can see, hopefully, that's set for DC amps. And we've clipped it around one of the wires on this driver's side front axle brake coil magnet wire. And now we're up at the front of the fifth wheel. We've got our amp meter clamp around that driver's side front axle magnet wire. We're gonna pull the emergency brake pin and we're gonna go back underneath and we're going to take a look at that amp meter and see what we're reading for amps. I'm expecting to see somewhere around uh, two and a half to three amps on this one brake magnet. Okay, so we're looking at the brake magnet and we can see that we are drawing 5.9 amps, which is a little more than I expected. I was off on my math on that. And... Uh, so that means that this, this brake magnet, we know for sure, is actuating and we know that this brake electrically is gonna work. And I haven't taken anything apart other than just simply hung this clamp on amp meter on the wire, pull the emergency brake pin. And I know for a fact that this driver's side front brake is gonna work. So I'm now on the driver's side rear axle brake magnet and we can see that this brake magnet is drawing about 2.2 amps of current. And the first thing everybody's gonna say, well, is why is one drawing more resistance than the other? Well, this just simply is a test to tell me that the brake magnet is energizing and it's moving those brakes. If I was actually able to roll this trailer just a little bit, that current or that amperage that you see on this meter would probably go up just a little bit and the one on the front brake would drop down. But what this is telling me that on my driver's side, both the uh, front and rear uh, brakes on the driver's side, I know that the electromagnets are doing the job and that they're going to energize and they're going to pull the uh, brake shoes out to actuate on both of these drums. So now we'll go over to the passenger side and do the same test. Okay, so now I am on the passenger side on the right rear brake and we can see that we are drawing about 2.8 amps of current. I call it 2.9. Again, if I was to roll this trailer just a little bit, uh, that amperage draw would increase just a little bit as those brake shoes work themselves out to apply more pressure. We're only, and uh, you only put the, the uh, clamp uh, uh, off your meter on one wire so that you can read the amperage. Now we'll go up to the uh, passenger side front brake. And here we are on the passenger side front brake and we can see that we're drawing roughly about two amps. So we had three brakes that are drawing two to two and a half amps and we had the driver's side right front brake that was drawing about five amps. And so that tells me that all four of these brakes are in fact working and they're gonna work and they're gonna do the job when we uh, uh, get ready to uh, head out and uh, head down to Nevada here in a couple of weeks. And right now we're up at the emergency brake switch and we've gone across one wire with the meter and we can see that we're drawing about six amps across this uh, emergency brake switch. I've had it pulled the entire time that I started to shoot this video and I've got my hands on out here and I can feel that it's starting to warm up a little bit so we're going to put the pen back in. And we now have the pen back in and boy the winds are starting to pick up again for 
some silly reason. And we're drawing about three tenths, three tenths of an amp, a residual a ghost amperage is what I call it. Or, uh, and what I started to say, and I got cold around the front uh, with that wind that started to pick up, that three tenths of an amp of uh, residual draw that you saw after I put the emergency brake pin back in, that's a parasitic draw and it's going to be there. So that again illustrates, uh, you know, why if you leave your RV someplace and it's not plugged into shore power, even if you turn those uh, battery disconnect switches off, since the emergency brake system is wired directly to the battery itself, uh, if you uh, leave it like that, in a couple of weeks, you're going to come back and you're going to have dead batteries. So that uh, shows you the classic uh, uh, parasitic draw. Some people are going to say, well, why did that uh, left front brake draw uh, roughly three amps more than the other three brakes? Uh, maybe it's the way it's sitting. Uh, the the has been sitting here since about the 20th of October of last year. And so, you know, it's, it's been sitting about six months now. And if I towed this around the block a couple of times and actuated the brakes and checked those measurements again, I would suspect that they would all read uh, a little bit more evenly. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that left front brake magnet uh, uh, just in case we start to have a problem. These are the original uh, Dexter brake shoes, brake assemblies, brake complete brake bike, uh, boy, complete, complete, uh, brake backing assemblies. Uh, so 10 years of service and about 40,000 miles of towing. Uh, the brake shoes are still almost as good as new, so we're not concerned about that. And uh, the intent here was just to show you a couple of quick electrical checks that you can make with a very inexpensive uh, meter if you happen to have one on hand, which if you own an RV and you don't have a meter, uh, I think you're kind of kidding yourself. Uh, you know, you can buy one of these inductive clamp-on meters like this one that I have here. And we'll see if we can get uh, on the name on that one a little bit better. And this one cost me, I think it was about $29 or $39. I've had it for a couple of years now. It's very good and expensive, and it's accurate. So if you don't have a meter, uh, particularly if you don't have an inductive uh, clamp-on meter that'll measure amperage and voltage, I highly recommend that you get one uh, and have it in that Alpine at all times. Well, hopefully this short video made some sense. Uh, maybe it didn't, but uh, perfectly clear in my old mind. So with that, uh, the Alpine guy says uh, 73s, and we'll see you later.